How is the movie Contact? Is that pretty, is it accurate? Is it just way off? I thought it was pretty great. Um, the okay. book Contact is absolutely spectacular. Um, I love the way that Carl Sagan writes, and it was kind of cool to see a story written by an astronomer about astronomy. Um, a lot of times, books about astronomy will be written by science reporters, especially if you're writing about the people in the human stories, which are wonderful. But Carl Sagan just got to bring such a unique perspective to Contact, and um, the movie made off of it kind of drew on some of his expertise. Um, and they did a pretty good job of, um, scientific accuracy. One of the only things that cracked me up in the movie though, is actually shot at the very large array Mm -hmm. in New Mexico, because there's a famous scene where Jodie Foster hears aliens and you, you do not listen to radio telescope data. First of all, she would have been getting it through a computer, but she's sits up with these headphones on and hears aliens and then has this mad dash back to the control room to look at the computer and look at the real data and see what's happening. And they film her driving through the real very large array and driving through the telescopes and driving down the road and running up to the doors of the building and throwing them open and going like down the hall and up the stairs and down another hallway and she hurls these doors open all of that is filmed in new mexico at the real very large array and then when she bursts through the doors they're on a hollywood set because when the film crew got to the actual control room at new mexico they went no this isn't cool looking enough this isn't high tech enough we need to build oh, a man. set because they because it was all like really old computers and like tape drives and things and we're working on you know a government budget and a science funding budget that is not you know extravagant and the crew is just like no we need a slightly snazzier looking (laughs) science room so it's real right up until they get in there and then it's a set yeah right okay no that's good to know that's interesting so yeah because i was like she's like listening on the headphones and like hearing stuff so you're not you're not laying on your like uh on your Mustang out in the field, just listening on headphones. (laughs) No, we don't get to, you know, listen to the data on a fourth Thunderbird, sadly. No, (laughs) that's right. They make a big point in the book that that's the car she drives. And for some reason, that's a detail that I've always remembered. Okay. Uh, so what is the, uh, what would you say is the best film that has a, like the best film representation of astronomers? Is is it contact or is it something else? I honestly think contact. Um, I can't blame them at all for having some fun and taking some cinematic license. Sure. Um, we will in astronomy, in fact, some of the projects that I work on now deal with taking data that we gather that is light and translating it into sound. Um, sometimes it's for accessibility issues. Um, the project I'm working on is looking at making data that um, visually impaired citizen scientists can use to help us study stars. Um, people will sometimes translate data into sound just because it's an easy way to study it, but it never comes in that way. Um, so I don't blame the movie for using that just because it makes it a more immersive TV experience. And obviously, once we get into talking to aliens, we've a bit departed from the science that we know about so far. But mm-hmm. I thought it was a nice depiction of what astronomy could be like and what these observatories were like. Um, we got to visit the Very Large Array in Contact, and um, another observatory that features very prominently in Contact is also Arecibo. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you saw this in the news because um, it came out just in the past day or so, but the tel- the Arecibo radio telescope, it's this thousand foot um, dish in Puerto Rico, and it's being decommissioned. Um, it had some support cables snap. It had been struggling for the past few years to keep itself supported. Um, through basically the funding that it needed to repair damage. And the National Science Foundation announced that it's being decommissioned and shut down. And it's just heartbreaking because it's got to be one of the more famous observatories that anybody's ever seen. Like if you just search Arecibo, A-R-E-C-I-B-O, it's the first picture that comes up. Um, it played the GoldenEye, like villain lair in GoldenEye. That's it was right. in contact. It's very recognizable and it's been a science power house for 50 years so it's a very sad telescope to have to say goodbye to yeah man so how does yeah how does the um i'm sure it's probably different depending on the the circumstance but how does the uh funding for these generally work who who is paying for these It varies from observatory to observatory, but usually you'll have something like NASA or the National Science Foundation, or you'll have a consortium of research observatories or something. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy, and these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats, and all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video, and this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you.
All right, you did it? Okay, I believe you, you said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats, and all you have to do is click that subscribe button. Right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to curiosity -ness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Girl, not very good.